In this lesson, we're going to look at all of the audio effects that we haven't covered up to this point. So it's going to be kind of a grab bag of audio effects. We're going to look at a few miscellaneous effects. We're going to look at two pretty big effects, dynamics and multiband compression, and then a bunch of noise reduction or removal effects. So to follow along, go to Working Files, Projects, going down to 1905, Miscellaneous and Noise Removal. First of all, these sort of miscellaneous effects that you're probably never going to use or are certainly not likely to use. Go to Effects, Audio Effects. First one is Invert. Invert inverts the phase. Now, it's not something you would likely do. I'll just apply it to this first clip here. Let's listen to the clip first. Expecting all of my Let's put it on that clip there, and I'll listen to it. I love in it's inverted the phase, but that doesn't mean that it's done something to cause the music to sound different. Inverting the phase is just not something you would likely do in Premiere. It's more likely something you would do in an audio editing program. And you would only do that probably if you were an engineer. Let's move on down to Mute here. Double click on Mute. Mute just switches the audio on and off, basically. I never said that's right, right there is where it does it. I don't know why this is a slider. It should be you. on or off. Nevertheless, it is a slider. If you want to quickly mute something, this is what you would use to do that. And finally, the other miscellaneous effect that we haven't covered so far is volume, which equals the volume effect up here. Okay, let's move on to the two big guys, dynamics and multiband compressor. We'll look at dynamics first, and I'm going to pull this effect controls panel out of there by holding down the controller command key, and dragging this guy out. Dynamics is four effects in one, auto gate, compressor, expander, and limiter. Autogate and Expander are similar. The way they work is they look for a quiet passage and then reduce that passage. Autogate cuts it to silence. Expander reduces it sort of dramatically depending on the ratio that you select here. It can be useful if you have a speech and there's some kind of audience hum going on. And when the speaker just takes a pause, you can just cut the hum to silence. It can be disconcerting a bit, though. I'll apply it to this music, and you'll find that it's a little odd here. I'll put on Autogate there. We'll take the default setting, which is 11 decibels below full scale, which is right here. Anything below that will be cut out. Well, that's not really that quiet a passage, so you'll see that it cuts out quite a bit here. All of my love. So you probably don't want to use it for music, and that's kind of a high threshold. You would typically drop that down to something like, you know, minus 30 or something like that. We'll go to Expander here instead of the auto gate. You can have more than one on at a time, but usually you just have one or the other of these two guys on. Expander does the same thing, except it just drops the audio based on a ratio. It doesn't cut it to zero. It just kind of drops it somewhat abruptly, depending on the ratio. The higher the ratio, the more abruptly it drops it. So we'll get this guy up to, let's say, minus six or something like that. And we'll see how that sounds. I never said that's what I wanted. More like kind of a warble as it goes back and forth, as opposed to the quick drop to zero. A limiter basically says that we're not going to let anything get louder than a certain amount. And this is what a lot of folks do when they do pop music. They want to limit it to just below zero dBFS. Let me turn that one on here. Nothing in here will get above basically minus three. It'll get right up there and it'll stop. So you can see it just stops there, just get above there. And that way you could avoid having any clipping where the audio gets too loud and you clip off those peaks and valleys to get that kind of a rough edge to your audio. And finally, there's the compressor. The compressor tries to reduce the dynamic range, meaning that you reduce the loud passages and you increase the quiet passages to kind of bring them closer together. We'll do a preset here. We'll go medium compression and see what that sounds like. Oh, how much you wanted me to stay. So you can see that it brought down the loud passages and lifted up the quiet ones. That's dynamics. Move on down the line here to the multiband compressor. The compressor takes three frequency bands, and you can adjust those frequency bands, sliding them back and forth here. And you can also describe how much the crossover there is here when you go down to the individual parameters down here. Then you can say how much you want to raise or lower that particular band. So we'll do a preset here and try that out. There's a music mastering preset here. You can see that it brings up the bass a bit, brings up the mids, and brings up the highs. Someone to talk to. So what it's trying to do is take things that might be quiet, like the organ, for example, and it's bringing the organ up here. You can hear that. And it's taking the vocal, which was really prominent, and bringing it down a little bit. So it is kind of compressing things, which is maybe not what you want to do this particular way. There's some presets here, too, that are kind of fun. For example, like telephone. You can limit your compression to one frequency range like that. We'll take a look at the bass comp. You'll see that it really lifts up the bass here. 
Let's go back to the beginning. Hang on a second. Gave me all your love and then some. Expecting. Let's move on down to the noise reduction or removal effects. I'm afraid these guys just don't work very well, and uh, I'm not really sure what the story is here. I just have to recommend that you take a pass on them, but I will show them to you. We'll start off with the dehummer, since I've got this clip here specifically set up with what they call a 60 hertz hum. Four score and seven years ago. I've got this dehummer that can choose between 50 and 60 hertz. It's quite specific. 60 hertz is the kind of electronic hum you're going to get in North America. 50 hertz would be in Europe. I'll click on 60 hertz, and it's looking specifically for that amount. And then you can reduce it by a certain amount. So I'm going to reduce it by a lot. And now that hum should be reduced. Four score and seven years ago, our father's... Not happening. I'll turn it on and off and see if there's a difference here. ...brought forth on this continent a new nation. No difference there at all. I'll try more filters. Supposedly more filters reduces more hum. Let's try that. Four score and seven years ago, our father's brought forth on this continent a new nation. Not much happening there that I can tell. But I do want to show you that this really is a 60 hertz hum, and there are other ways to reduce it. So I'm going to go to Adobe Audition for a couple of seconds here. This is Adobe Audition inside the Spectral Frequency and Waveform display. This is that exact same file. Force. You can see the hum here. That's a 60 hertz hum. They're down at the bottom of the frequency range. This is the frequency range over here. Let's reduce that by going to an effect, effects. Go to filter and EQ, and we'll go to the notch filter. Notch filter has a preset for 60 hertz right there. And I can reduce it by a lot or a little. Let's just start off with a little here. Four and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on the... You can hear it's basically gone. Certainly my voice is affected by this because 60 hertz has been removed from my voice as well. But it sounds pretty good, right? This continent, a new nation. So it can be done, and it is a 60 hertz hum there. Let's go back to Premiere now. We'll try out something else here. Instead of the de-hummer, we'll try the de-clicker. The de-clicker is supposed to look for clicks and pops. I'll go show you some over here. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought... And this thing is on. Let me set the threshold up high. The higher, the better. And set the de-plop, as it's called, the removal, basically, up there. And we'll see how it works. Fourth on this continent, a new nation. I'm hearing clicks here. I'm going to go over here to this crackling sound. Let's try that. Four score and seven years ago, our we could try these various presets Father has brought forth on this continent a new nation. But I hear no change. If I go to Audition, that should show us the things that are going to be removed. That's the purpose of that. If you hear the audio coming through, that means you're not really doing it well. Let's try that. So I hear a couple things that are being removed. You can see those little guys, they would be removed, but nothing dramatic. So I'll go back to non-audition to see if it makes any difference here. Seven years ago. Our father has brought four. Not so good. Let's go up to the crackler. Same kind of a thing. It's supposed to remove specifically this kind of vinyl noise that's on this. The threshold is high. Reduction is high. Let's see what we do here. Four score and seven years ago. Our father has brought forth on this continent. A Seems to find the initial one, but then doesn't find them after that. I'm going to quickly switch back to audition to show you something over there. Now, Audition also is a click remover that doesn't work that well, but it does have the ability to remove them manually. I'm just going to zoom in on this little area right there by pressing the plus key a few times. You can see clicks. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. Boom, boom. There's that little click there. I can highlight it or select it like that. I can say, let's remove that using this little uh, auto heal tool. And now that'll be gone. And seven years ago. It's pretty much gone. Let's go over here. Our father's. There's one more. I'll show you how to remove that one real quickly. We'll do that little auto heal as well. And Our father is brought gone. So that would be how you'd remove clicks manually inside Audition. So it can be done, but it is kind of a manual process there. All right, back to Premiere. Let's take a look at the spectral noise reduction. You just saw the spectral frequency display over there on Audition. So this looks kind of similar. Here we go. Four score and seven years ago. Our father is brought forth. On so you can see down there that 60 hertz hum. So we could say, okay, I can see it. Let's remove it by going to the filter. I'll type in 60 hertz here, and I'll say let's reduce it by a lot. See if that makes a difference. I think you know what the answer is going to be, right? Score and seven years ago, our father has brought kind of removes it. This one actually seems to be doing something. We'll try two filters. We'll move it twice here, 60 hertz twice. Here, try that one. Four score and seven years ago. Still there, but at least it reduces it somewhat. So this may be your best bet if you want to try to reduce a hum, for example. It's hard to reduce anything else besides a hum here, because this is a frequency range that you're selecting here. 
Okay, let's move on down to this last clip. It's called the de-esser effect. The de-esser tries to remove things like sibilance like that. So I'll just play this clip for you. Sounds like sibilance. <laughs> that would be me trying to sound sibilant. And let's just see how this thing works. So we got a male voice and we got reduced by quite a bit. And let's see if we get rid of the sibilance. Sounds like sibilance. Yep, not going to happen. I'll show you kind of the competition here. Go back to audition. Got this sibilance clip here. We're going to apply a de-esser effect to it. Go down to amplitude and compression. De-esser, there it is. And this looks a little different here. We'll try to reduce it now. This sounds like sibilance. At least it gives it a shot there. Sibilance happens at a high frequency, so this tries to remove the high frequencies without removing too much of the voice. But you get a sense that, yeah, obviously if you remove too much sibilance, then it sounds this weird. This sounds like sibilance. So there's only so much you can do there. So back to Premiere. So that's a quick rundown on the miscellaneous effects. It looks like the noise removal tools are not all that effective, but your go-to tools for any kind of dynamics processing are Dynamics and the multiband compressor.